In the last few tutorial videos, I showed you how to access game objects within the code and then how to manipulate those game objects with the code that you write. In this, next, in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to do the same thing with an object, a game object's components. So please follow along with me and after opening up Unity, go to 3D object and create a cube. Now, I want to access the box collider that is currently on this cube. Now, here you might say, well, why don't we just do this from the inspector? And you're right. We can change a lot of these settings, even edit the collider in the inspector, right? We can change the size here. We can click on these little dots and change it around. But I'm actually going to hit Control Z, right? Because what we really want to do is we want to change these things via the code. Why do we want to do that? We want to do that so that when we're in the game, because when we're actually playing the game here, when our, when our player is actually playing the game, we don't want to, or actually it's impractical for us to think that we can change these things as the user is playing the game. We want to, the whole point of creating games is we're making a dynamic setup so that the game itself responds to the user's actions. When you're playing, let's say, your favorite video game, there's not a person on the other end uh, basically sitting there and changing things within the game as you're playing it. One of the developers isn't sitting there. The game itself has been written by the developers with a certain logic to respond to certain events in certain ways. So how are we going to access this box collider on this game object? We're going to add a component, go to new script, and I'm going to call this collider script. You can name it whatever you wish, but please make sure that the name that you give it here also matches the name within the script itself. I'm going to open that script by double clicking it, and you'll notice that this then opens it in MonoDevelop. I'm going to make this full screen to make it easier for you to see. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. So now we have this nice and zoomed in so that you can see it very clearly. And I am going to go up here and I'm going to say, as, as I did before, public game object cube, which is going to now allow me to reference this cube when I drag it in the inspector. Now I'm going to rearrange these curly braces because I actually like to have my curly braces underneath my function like that so it's easy, so my code is easier to read. Next, what I'm going to do is within the start function, I'm going to say, um, well, first, actually, I want to make one more variable up here, and I'm going to say box collider. This is going to be box collider, and I'm going to call it col. Again, you can name these variables whatever you want. Just remember to reference them that way in within this script. Now, I'm going to say col equals cube dot get component, and the component that I want to get is the box collider. Component. Okay, so please notice the syntax variable name equals game object name dot get component. Then we have this open triangle bracket box collider closing triangle bracket space. Now, this space, uh, I didn't put this space here, but Unity put it in. Uh, so it's common practice. Um, I, I used to be where you're not supposed to leave space. But then if the game engine wants to, it'll put a space there for you. So it all depends. Uh, so I guess by default, the space is going to be there. Because even if you don't put it there, Unity is going to put it there for you. Now you're going to open parenthesis and close parenthesis. And you're going to have a semicolon to end off this line. What does this do for us? Well, that's a good question. Now that we've referenced this box collider that's attached to this cube in our script, we can do anything we want to it, uh, you know, within the limitations of the component itself. For example, in this update function, uh, if you watch my previous tutorials, you're going to know that we used key presses to turn the game object on and off. Now let's show that we can turn the game, the collider, on and off based on the access we have to it here. So I'm actually going to type in if input dot get key key code dot q so if the user presses the q key and now here's a big difference between game objects and components 
for our game object to be activated and deactivated, we use set active. For our component to be activated or deactivated, we're actually going to use dot enabled equals true or dot enabled equals false. Now we're going to do call dot enabled equals true. Right? And now I'm going to copy and paste this similar to what I did in one of the last tutorials where I say, okay, that's key code, that's the user presses the Q key, but what about if the user presses the W key? Well, then we're going to go to call.enabled equals false, right? So here, once we save this script, we now have it where the user can press the Q or W key to turn on and off the collider. Let's see the script in action. So I'm gonna exit out here. I'm gonna add this collider script to our game object. So I'm gonna drag this out here and add it to the cube. Okay. So we have it added twice. Oh, that's because I added it as a new script before. So I'll just remove one of these components. Now we just have one. We just want one selected. And now I'm going to drag the cube itself over to reference itself in this script. Now usually you use public game objects when you want to attach the script to another game object, say the main camera. There's also a way that we could reference the cube itself. If you want to reference the cube itself within the script, you would just reference it instead of saying public game object cube you would remove the public here and you'd say just game object cube and then what you would say is cube above this you would say cube equals and then you're going to say this dot game object this means this script game object means the game object that this script is attached to please save this script now when we hit play You'll notice we have our cube here. Now, if I hit, now let me actually select the cube and please pay close attention to this box collider component. I am now going to press the Q key. You'll see that nothing happened. I believe that's because we set that to be the true condition. If I hit the W key, okay, so you need to select the game view first. So please click inside of the game view. I was actually selected here. Um, over in the hierarchy and we weren't seeing any changes except for this change up here because I was toggling between pan and move but actually we want to click the game view which brings us back into play mode and now you'll see that this when I hit the Q key it's activated when I hit the, the W key it's deactivated you'll notice this box color a component here so we referenced it and now we're allowing it to change within the game based on user input so now when would this be uh, effective well, let's say we didn't do it based on user input. Let's say we were making a car racing game, but we didn't want the car to collide with a certain object. When the car was approaching the object, we could turn off either the car's collider or the other object's collider to have the car pass straight through the game object. That's just one example of uh, a usage for this sort of um, thing in programming.